Hi guys, in today's video we're going to be installing a Minecraft server on our home network. I'm going to be installing it using Proxmox and I'm also going to be creating a virtual machine with Windows 10. So we need to download our files which is the Proxmox installer and the Windows 10 ISO. And we also need Rufus which is a program to flash images to a USB to make it a boot drive. So we're going to be writing the Minecraft server on, on the Win Windows 10 virtual machine because it's the most basic way for it to be done. You could also use a Linux server or any server you're comfortable with, but I think for the average person doing this, Windows 10 on a local net network is probably the easiest way possible. Once our files have downloaded, open up Rufus, select the ISO image we're gonna burn, which is Proxmox, Proxmox installer. Once the image is selected, click OK, and we're going to have have a few warnings, but just um, click OK on both, and then we're going to click Start, and it will give you a warning that it's going to erase the drive, which is fine. All the other options leave at default and click Start. De depending on your USB computer, this can take either five minutes or ten minutes or even longer. If you don't have a server or you don't want to use Proxmox, you can do this method straight on your computer. So you just skip over the Proxmox installation and then we can install the Minecraft server right from our computer. Now we're gonna to go to the server, put the USB flash drive in it and boot from it. Here we're gonna select our hard disk for storage. And then we're gonna choose our country and time zone, which for me is Australia. And, and my time zone is Melbourne. This is best to do with a wired connection. So make sure your ethernet cable is plugged in. Now choose a password to log into your server and make sure the password is confirmed and also put in a valid email address. And now Proxmox should pull your network information straight from your router. And here you just put in a host name so you can name your server with any name you want but make sure you put .local at the end of it. Now once all that is done, click next and it's going to install the hypervisor. Now it will give you the address to log into your server via the browser. So go to the address bar and type in https colon slash slash your address with the port number 8006. Once logged in, username is root as always, password is the one you chose. So from here, we are going to upload our ISO image, which for me is Windows 10, but it can be anything you want. Now I'm just running a Minecraft server off the Proxmox server, just, be just because I have the equipment and I want to show you guys how to do it. But as I said, you can run the Minecraft server straight from your computer, or you can even install VirtualBox and run it from a virtual machine from using that. I'll pass you on to Home Lab Networks, and he's going to show you how to create the virtual machine use using Proxmox for Windows 10. And FYI, we also need some drivers for Windows 10, so make sure, I'll leave a link in the description, but download that, upload it to Proxmox, make sure you install the drivers. Choose your ISO image. Windows 10, Microsoft and 10. So make sure you click the QEMU agent, change your controller, revert O. You want to put your bus device as SCSI, and then you can add more storage if you need to. I'm just going to leave mine as default. Also, I'll give this one 4. Oh, memory, I'm going to give it 4 gigabytes, so 4096. We'll leave this as default. Finish. Virtual machine is created. We need to go to the hardware tab of the machine. And we need to add a CD drive so we can add the drivers. So choose your storage. And your ISO image is the driver file which is this one, and add. All right, Windows Setup, select your language. Install now. I have a product key, put it in here, so you can get all the features of, of Windows. If you don't have one, just click I don't have a product key. Select the operating system you downloaded. For me, it's Windows Pro. With the license terms, because we have read all this. Do a custom install. No hard drive to install the file to, so 
We need to load the driver. Browse. Your drive uses where your drivers hide. Scroll down until you find the file. SCSI. Open that up. Windows 10. AMD 64. Click OK. This driver should pop up. Click Next. Hooray, the drive's popped up. We can, we can continue. And now the installation of Windows should it just work for us. So system has restarted. We'll do the last bit of the install. Choose which region you live in. Your keyboard layout, US. And now this will finish the install process and then after that we'll add the drivers to the system again to clear up some errors. Then we'll change the graphics quality so it looks amazing. And now we'll just add our account now you can sign into your Microsoft account, but for this video I'm just going to create an offline account. You can sign in later on if you want to. Home Lab Networks of course. In any Windows install, I always turn all the, this stuff off to minimise them tracking you. I'm going to right click on here and click on the device manager. This PCI device has a little warning sign. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to update this driver. We're going to browse for drivers. And we'll select the location of the files. You click on the CD drive. The virtual machine will just search through all these files to find the correct driver. So we don't have to go through it like before. So click OK. Next, search for drivers, awesome. done. This PC, CD drive, and then you, you want to see the guest agent here, open that up, and then install C4 version. Double click that, yes, All right, done, and change the re resolution to the highest you can, much better. But that's how you install Windows 10 on a server in your home lab. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you in the next video. So we've got to open up Google, type in Minecraft server download. This one's for Java. And then we're going to click the first link, which will take it to the server download page. Download the Minecraft, Minecraft server Java file. Once that's downloaded, create a new folder on the desktop. I named my Minecraft server. You can name it anything you want and copy that server file into this folder. Now this is running off the virtual machine, but you can do this from your computer. So cut or copy the file into the Minecraft server folder. And then after that, we're gonna double click it and run it for, for the first time. It's gonna add the files to the folder. And then we're gonna open up the text document EULA and change EULA from false to true, which will allow us to run the server because we're agreeing to the their, um, terms. We'll save that file. And then going to go into the server properties, and this is used by Notepad. Now this is um, all the settings for the world on Minecraft. So, so these, so pretty much it's a list of rules. So if you want a certain seed or commands or turn on or off, that's where you edit that information. So once that's done, double click the server and it will open up and it will start preparing the spawn area in Minecraft. So that server now is up and running, so we're going to click on multiplayer, and then we're going to add a server. Once the server is up and running, we need to get the IP address that the server is running on. So for this case, we need the IP address of the computer it's running from. So we're going to open up command prompt, type in ipconfig slash all, and it's going to list all your addresses up there. So we're going to be looking for the IPv4, and we're going to copy that address into the server address on, the, on Minecraft. So give the server a name, type that address in, click done and the server should connect. Now we've created our, our own local server on, on our network. So anyone in your 
home can join this server and play. And it's just a, this is just an easier way if you've got a spare computer or server to set up a server and then your computer is, um, it frees up space on your computer and lets it run a bit better. But this is just a very basic way of getting the Minecraft server up and running. There's more better ways of doing it, but they're more com complex if you don't know what you're doing. But to get started with a Minecraft server, this is the easiest way. And I just wanted to show you how to, guys how to do it, because my son, my five-year-old, loves Minecraft. And this is just a little project that we, we did together. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please leave a like, consider subscribing. And I plan in the future to do a video on how to make a tunnel so the outside